I keep saying last one, but this is really last one. Um, Napoleon of the Outlaws had an interesting take, and his take was uh, Vegas could have solved this 27 years ago. I know you kind of spoke and said, you know, without Suge Knight, you know, coming forward or without anybody really identifying who did it, um, that was why it was so difficult. But his point was Vegas could have solved this 27 years ago. They never wanted to solve it. And the only reason they solved it now is by Keefe D going out and doing these TV shows and doing these YouTube channels that it started to make them look bad. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? I disagree with the first part. I, I don't think that they didn't care. I think that it was a complicated case for them. Um, it's a little bit of, um, you know, there's some geographical issues. There were a lot of complications early on. You know, they had guys from LA police departments, not LA, well, at least one guy from LAPD named Richard McCauley, but you know, you have got active law enforcement guys from Inglewood and from Compton, and they're working off duty security at death row. And so you've got these Vegas guys, you know, trying to get help from California, Los Angeles area law enforcement, and they just don't know who they can trust, who they can really rely on. And this isn't trying to throw any kind of shade on, on Reggie. Um, this is just me being a practical, objective investigator that the guys in Vegas aren't really sure if they divulge information, you know, can they control the flow of that information out here in California when you have guys that are collaborating or fraternizing with the criminal element at death row records. So it was complicated for Vegas because of that. Um, geographically, those were some obstacles. And of course, people weren't cooperating. Eyewitnesses really didn't see anything. It's just like in Biggie's case. It all happens in the, you know, in the blink of an eye. So witness observations weren't particularly helpful. Um, you know, no license plate on the car, there's no traffic cameras, there's, it all happens really quick. Everybody sees something different in that flash of time. Um, they never recover any physical evidence. It's, it's, it's not as easy as people might think to solve some of these things when you have people that won't cooperate with you. Yeah. Um, Kevin Hackey said this one time, and I just want to ask if it's, if you, if it's true. Do you believe that video exists of either murder, the Tupac or the Biggie one? Well, obviously with the one with Biggie, you know, we've all seen that video of the fans that were sitting in a van outside of the Peterson and they're filming things and we see Puffy, you know, pulling out in the suburban. Shortly thereafter, Biggie pulls out and then, you know, as things, as, in that moment of in, in that moment of intensity, when the shooting takes place, the guy accidentally hits the button on his camcorder and shuts it off for a second, and then turns it back on. By the time he turns it back on, you've already got, you know, Biggie in the intersection, sitting in the in in the in the truck, and Puffy running around to try to give him aid, and um, that's as close to having video um, footage of the murder. Um, obviously, there's nothing on Tupac's murder. Nobody was there to film that. So I don't know, you know, again, consider the source. It's Kevin Hackey. We can go, we can spend a whole episode talking about his fabricated stories.